topic is pitfalls every ilm seeker or seeker of ilm or knowledge should know. Pitfalls every seeker of knowledge should know. And the speaker for this lecture is Mufti Ismail Musa Menk. Mufti Menk was born in Harare in Zimbabwe. He was tutored by his father, who is a well-known scholar and da'i. He completed his hifs and recitation courses at an early age and learnt the Arabic and Urdu languages whilst studying Sharia under his father. At the same time, he attended an academic college called St. John's College in Harare, where he completed his secondary secular education. He then obtained a degree in Sharia from the Islamic University of Medina. And later he specialized in ifta at Darul Uloom Kantharia in Gujarat, India. He is a broad-minded motivational speaker who has won the hearts of many. He teaches at Darul, Darul Ilm in Harare and finds the time to attend many international religious conferences, seminars, etc. He is an active member of the Majlisul Ulama in Zimbabwe and heads its ifta department. He is one of the Imams at the Arcadia Masjid in Harare. He has been invited on lecture tours in many countries. He contributes towards the Islamic content of various media networks and is an experienced social worker and counselor. He enjoys spending time with the underprivileged. I would like to now invite Mufti Meng to deliver his lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala al-mab'uthi rahmatan lil alameen, nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa attabi'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and his entire household. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions, to bless those who have struggled and strived to learn this deen, this religion, this goodness, to put it into practice and to convey it to others in a way that today it has come to us and may we be from amongst those who can learn it put it into practice and convey it to others in a way that it may stay within our offspring and it may continue until the end of time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us in that way and to bless every single one of us including our offspring. Ameen. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min ayni la tadma' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' wa min dua illa yusma'. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant us knowledge that is beneficial and we ask you to protect us from knowledge that, will be made, that no use will be made of. And we ask you to benefit us from the knowledge that you have granted us. O oh Allah, we seek protection from eyes that will not cry for your sake, from a stomach that will not be filled, from a heart that will not tremble in your fear. And we ask you to grant us every form of goodness. We also seek from you protection from a dua or a supplication that is made that goes unanswered. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, it's very, very good to be here. I arrived last night and Alhamdulillah, having had a good session, we are back in the same auditorium here, this time speaking about the pitfalls when it comes to the student of knowledge. And we are going to speak about both types of students, those who are more or less full-time students and those who are part-time. When we say part-time, you might be having a life where you are busy with your own field, you might be a doctor, a lawyer employed by someone, you might be working perhaps in a business or in some form of place of work and you are learning part time. Remember, every single one of us should be a student of knowledge. It is wrong for us, no matter what we're doing, not to be in search of Islamic knowledge, in search of knowledge that will be beneficial for us 
in terms of our link with our maker. Because no matter how much we learn in terms of secular education, and I'm talking of that education, when I say secular, I mean that which will take you through the pages of this world. And that which will take you through the comfort zones of this particular world by earning a livelihood. That is necessary as well. But more important is that which will take you through the pages of the hereafter. That which will take you with your link, with your maker, much further. And it will give you the outlook. It will give you an in-depth look into who you are, where you actually came from, where you were before you were made, before you came into existence and why you are here and where you are going and where you would like to be and where you shall be. May Allah grant us Jannah. So if we are not going to be constantly in search of that knowledge and polish up and remind ourselves constantly where we've come from, why we are here and where we are heading, we may then fall prey to those who forget their whole purpose of existence and when it is too late, they cry, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتُ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا in Surah al muminun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the one who shall regret in a way that when death overtakes him, he says, O oh Allah, grant me a returning. Let me go back. I want to make mends. I want to do things right this time so that I can do the pure deeds in that which I have left behind. And Allah says, Kalla, nay, it's just a statement that comes out of their mouths. May Allah not make us from those. So if we want to protect ourselves from that, one of the first things that we need to know to start with, and I'm sure this is mentioned every time knowledge is spoken about, the importance of it and how to earn it and achieve it. We firstly need to be sincere. Sincere meaning, why am I learning this? We have the ahadith that are in almost all books of hadith. The opening hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, where Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says he heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, publicly, the statement was made on the mimbar, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى in one narration, Definitely all deeds are judged by their underlying intentions. So if your intention, now this is obviously my statement now, if your intention is correct and your intention is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be able to achieve much more. Here we are talking of Learning. Some people learn for different reasons. You know, when we go out to school, people say, well, this man has to go because he needs to earn a lot of money. He needs to earn a lot of money or he needs a job so that he can in future be able to lead a comfortable life. Well, if that was your sole intention, perhaps you might achieve that. Maybe you might achieve earning money and you might achieve the fact that you've got now a good job. Alhamdulillah. But when it comes to the knowledge of deen, and even when it comes to knowledge of dunya, to a certain extent, but when it comes to the knowledge of deen, primarily we need to know we must not spoil our intention. Many times a student of knowledge falls when his intention is contaminated. Sometimes one might ask, how does that happen? It happens sometimes openly and sometimes in a way we don't really realize and recognize until we search. So openly could be, that people think, you know, I'm going to go back and I'm going to be a big sheikh and I'm going to really tell my people and prove to them that, you know what, you guys are all wrong and I'm right. If that's the case, then we have a complex where, what if you are wrong? Who is going to correct you? 
He won't be corrected. So you need to know, yes, I want to learn this knowledge as an amana. It's a trust. It's something that's being passed on generation after generation. And yes, I do want to teach it. But not that I want to prove a point to people to say, I know and you don't know. If that's the case, we're losing the plot. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam he says, Whosoever studies knowledge, whosoever studies knowledge in order to debate with the knowledgeable or to boast and to show off to those who are ignorant, they won't even get the scent of paradise. The smell of it won't even come to them. Now that's a stern warning to say, are you learning in order to be able to debate with people? Or are you learning in order to be able to brag and boast to those who might have a little bit less knowledge to say, I know you don't know. If that's the case, the intention is lost or the correct intention is lost. So it's important not to fall in this way. Many people fall and sometimes initially our intention is clear. It's good. But as time passes and we learn, we learn a bit more. We tend to then change the intention unknowingly. And this is why we've got to always go back and do what is known as tasheeh and niya. Correct your intention. Go back and see, look into yourself. Am I still learning in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I still learning in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And is that my prime aim? Am I learning in order to pass it on to the generations or to pass it on to others in a beautiful way? So that is one of the first things we always speak about when we talk about the intention or when we talk about knowledge and the intention, uh, the underlying intention. Moments ago, I mentioned secular education. We can also rectify our intentions when it comes to that. You are becoming a doctor or a lawyer. You might want to earn a bit of money, but you need to know we should serve the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whatever we have in terms of secular education. So I want to learn. I will be able to earn, inshallah. I will be able to serve the rest of humanity, which is also part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will also be able to put forth some form of charities in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is also something that you would be able to do when you earn a salary, inshallah. And I will also be able not only to serve humanity and to, you know, give out the charities, but to pass this knowledge to others in a positive way and then to compare it with that which I know in terms of deen. Whatever contradicts what Allah has sent, we delete it. We don't need it. Whatever conforms to it, we will progress inshallah in that. So if for example someone teaches us something, even if it is in a university and it happens to contradict what is taught in the Quran and the Sahih Sunnah, the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that particular case, we need to know in our hearts that this is wrong. You know, when it comes, for example, just a quick example, people teach us the theory of evolution when we go to school and they tell us, you know what, we were all apes before. We were all monkeys before. Allahu Akbar, apes. And we came up from animals. We know that that contradicts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in the sense that that part of it, there might be some little parts of some theories where you have a theory, for example, a scientific theory. It might be 90% wrong and 10% of it might be correct. In that particular case, you need to know what is right in it and what is wrong in it. The theory of evolution also states that man adapts very quickly to the environment. That part of it, we agree, we adapt. You know, when it is cold, there are certain changes that happen in your body which happen to protect that body from the cold to a great degree before you even put on your jersey. So that doesn't mean we fully believe in everything that that theory says or we fully disagree with it. But there is an aspect of it or a lot of aspects of it we disagree. And what we will do, we might learn it in terms of knowing what is being said. And in our hearts, we know this is wrong. And when we are teaching it, we will make it clear to say, look, this is what it says. And those who said it, they may have been from apes or monkeys, but not us. Allah protect us. And even that is said just in jest, meaning it's said on a lighter note. But to be honest, we are created from Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And we know the Quran is full of it. We need to go out and study and we need to know what is mentioned. And as I said, we don't want to study it in order to debate with people. No, we want to convey. There's a difference. 
If you stand in front of people and make everyone feel ignorant, they won't want to listen to you. They will walk away. They will walk away. But if you come to convey the knowledge you have learned, in that particular case, you find people will be keen on knowing what you have to say. And this is also a pitfall where sometimes you have, as we said in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a student of knowledge who is learning in order to debate and argue. If that's the case, where is the conveying gone? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey from me even if it means a single verse. So what means conveying? Or what is the meaning of conveying? We will learn, we will understand, we will endeavor to put into practice and then we will teach it to others, convey it to others. Not that you come and make everybody feel like they are so bad and, and so on. You see, if you study the Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prime message was the message of Tawheed. The message of worshipping one Allah, leaving the idols and leaving everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the prime message. And if you look at how he conveyed it, amazing. Look at the verses revealed in Makkah al-Mukarramah. They were on the topic. They were discussing imaniyat. They were discussing issues of belief, but in such a positive way. The warnings were issued. Once or twice, you have direct warnings where people were made to feel small for the purposes that they tried to make the messenger be, be, be belittled or feel small, so to speak. Look at Abu Lahab. Why does the Quran say, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tabba ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab a direct attack on Abu Lahab. Why? Because he did it. He got up and he says, Tabbalaka ya Muhammad, Ali hadha jama'atana. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered the people of Quraysh on Mount Safa and told them, if I were to tell you that there is an army behind this mountain ready to attack you, would you accept? Would you believe? And they said, yes, you are an honest man and trustworthy. Why wouldn't we believe? Then when he says, I am here to warn you, to convey to you a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your maker of the coming of a day and so on. The message of Islam was put forward. You find Abu Lahab coming up and literally swearing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of everyone. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very humbly responded, very humbly. He was not the one who issued these verses or dished them out on his own. It wasn't his statement. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses that were to remain up to the end of time, cursing Abu Lahab, cursing him. These verses are so dangerous that some of the Mufassirin make mention of the fact that when this was sent down, it was known now that this man is not going to be guided to Islam because already he's cursed. Imagine if Allah curses someone by name in the Quran, what goodness will come out of that particular person? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always forgive us and may he grant us sincerity of intention and may he make us from those who can convey the message in a positive way and not just blast people and not just make people feel like they are so far from Islam. And why I say this still, it is a pitfall where sometimes a student of knowledge learns, we learn so much, mashallah, and we begin to see the light. And instead of understanding, putting it into practice, and thinking of the best way, thinking of the best way to present it to others. Instead of that, we think of the worst way. I always give the example of a burger. You see a burger, mashallah. Don't worry, we're breaking for lunch. As soon as I finish, you can go and have the burger, inshallah. You see, when a burger is presented to you, how is it presented? Do they just give you dough and do they just bake that dough after having flicked it into the oven? No, it's made into a shape. And then it's put into the oven. It's baked properly. They slice it in the center. Sometimes they, they toast it very slightly. You know, uh, I don't know what it's called because I'm not a cook, but I know what it tastes like and I know what it looks like as well. So thereafter, they will have a little cheese. They will have some form of salad there. They probably will have a nice fresh tomato there. P perhaps if you are like me, you might want a little bit of ketchup on there as well. And then you have a little... Mashallah, burger in there that is also shaped with the shape of that particular burger and the, the shape of the, the bread, so to speak. And then they put it in, they close it, they present it in such a beautiful packaging whilst it is still warm. Then you see it dripping with hot chips that are nice and crispy, alhamdulillah, with, 
with the salt and vinegar on it, mashallah, and a little bit of spicing, and then present it to you with a cold drink, mashallah. Look, some are saying, oh. Why I am saying this is we, regarding food, will present if we have a restaurant, the food in the best way possible so that people feel like coming and paying for it and eating it and saying, yummy, we're coming back for more. Am I right? MashaAllah, look at all the yes, because I know. Don't worry, inshallah, it's coming. Why don't we think that, look, our, our, the need for knowledge is far greater than the need for food and drink? Wallahi. It is far greater. If you eat and drink all your life and don't know the purpose of your existence, you have wasted that life. But if you've lost food and drink and you die, having known why you were alive, Wallahi, it is far more beneficial for you. Or oh, that is the benefit. So why don't we, as students of knowledge, or those who would like to seek knowledge, understand and realize we need to present it properly. And we need to try and think of a way that will make it look such that, yes, we are giving the message across, we are giving it, and at the same time, people are attracted to how it is being presented. The message is the same. You still have the same nutrients and everything inside there. They will come, they will want it, they will want more, they will come back for more. And if they have had quite a lot, as soon as they go out, have a break, they will be back. Just like how we were back in five minutes when, in fact, I think it was four. We were back in four minutes, mashallah. When, the, uh, when our MC said, we'll be back in five minutes, I think within three, four minutes, everybody was back here. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from those who really seek knowledge. So one of the disasters, it also falls under the lack of sincerity. When the intention is incorrect, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to correct our intentions and may He make us from amongst those who think, who think very deeply and who implement what is known as wisdom together with knowledge because sometimes you have knowledge but you haven't been able to present it you have turned people away because of bad statements and this is why sometimes a student of knowledge concentrates on minor differences and starts issuing blasting edicts against this one and that one not realizing what the bigger picture is we are members of a globe just like how you were ignorant moments ago there are others who are ignorant perhaps and what will happen is if you do not use the methods that perhaps were effective with you and others who might be loved to you, how are you going to have a method that is effective with those whom you may not even know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to spread the deen. We have many distractions when it comes to knowledge. As I said moments ago, we have some who are specialized. Go out, we seek knowledge, we want to come back after a year, two years, five years, ten years. Remember, there is no end to learning. That is something also very important. Sometimes you think, you know what, I went out, I studied six years, I'm back. So I'm a big sheikh. No, no. You only have the keys, the keys yet to the treasure. The treasure does not deplete. It never ever ends. Al-ilmu bahrun la sahila lah. Beautiful Arabic quotation. Knowledge is an ocean without a coast. No coast. You swim. Forever and ever. So if you think, I know, you need to be careful. What do you know? How much do you know? Knowledge that I have and you have is limited. It has a beginning to it and an end to it. In the sense that what I have, but what I would like to achieve has no end to it. No end. It might have a beginning, but it doesn't have an end. So remember, continue swimming and continue achieving and continue learning and continue progressing and look at different angles of knowledge. You see, I told you moments ago, it's good to know what the theory of evolution is so that you can understand where the others are coming from. The beautiful Arabic saying, I got to know what is wrong in order to be able to protect myself from it. So. I had to learn what evolution was all about, not because I wanted to, uh, you know, agree with them or, or disagree and so on. I got to know about it. I, I checked what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to say about it. So I got to know whatever was bad as well in order to be able to stay away from it. You cannot stay away from shaitan if you don't know who is shaitan. If you don't know who he is, you might welcome him into your home. 
You know, back at home in my country, when the thieves want to steal, you see there is a meter for water and a meter for electricity, so they can ring your bell and say, I've come to read the meter. If you're not careful and you don't know that that's how they come in, you might just open the door straight for the thief. Allahu Akbar. If that's the case, you were foolish. So you've got to know how the thief comes in in order to be able to protect yourself from the thief. But if you don't know, you're going to fall in it. So this is why sometimes it's important to know things that are harmful so that you can protect yourself from it. And as we said, many distractions when it comes to a person who is seeking knowledge. We have those who, and that's the bulk of us here, myself included, we need to seek knowledge whenever and wherever possible. Don't ever think that, you know what, I'm off. Uh, right now, I don't need to learn because, you know, I, I'm, I'm off at the moment. I've decided that for one month I'm taking a break. Perhaps there is something being taught at that moment that you need so desperately that you might not hear later. And this is why one of the pitfalls is when we do not seize every opportunity to learn. Someone might say, but how can I learn, 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 learn all my life? Well, you know what? This might be the end of your life. And this might be a statement you will need in order to take you into the Akhirah. So don't say, I'm off. Are you off breathing? Are you off eating? No, we'd like to eat thrice a day, thrice a day, twice a day. Sometimes even if you eat once a day, but daily it happens. You can't say, but come on, yesterday I ate. And I've been eating all along. Let me just give it a break. Just like that, we have the issue of knowledge. Don't get tired. Sometimes people get fed up, tired. You know, you go and study. Remember, shaitan comes to you. And shaitan wants you to give up. And this is also a pitfall. People give up. So there is a distraction. I know of a student of knowledge having, having been given such a beautiful opportunity to study. Someone came to him and told him, you know, you're going to go study Islam. Can you eat Islam? That's, that's a disastrous question. Can you pay Islam as rental to live in your flat? Can you buy a car with your Quran? Give the man a Quran and say, give me a vehicle. So this young man, he didn't understand what was being asked. That's a dangerous question. What he was being asked is, what are you going to earn? All these ulama walking around, they don't even own a Toyota. Forget about a Mercedes. Yes, and they don't even get paid more than a few dollars. And they can barely afford things. Their children are all running around in schools that are probably state schools. They can't afford anything. So what are you going to learn for? Why? Sadly, this young man, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such attitude. He fell prey to the statements. He says, no, you're right. So after being accepted, and after being given the opportunity, he didn't want to go. That is shaitan who came to him and said, you know what, don't go. So he didn't go. Who lost? He lost. Someone else will have taken his place and will have benefited because sustenance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In no way am I saying that you should not have a qualification in terms of this dunya. No, you can and you should. But don't think that the owner of sustenance only sustains those who have big degrees in terms of the dunya. No, you might study and we know so many who are scholars of Islam who are well to do. And remember, ultimately, don't let shaitan fool you that contentment comes with figures. No, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a condition, even if you are poor. How many of us know of people who are not wealthy at all, but they are so happy and content and others who are so wealthy, but they have no contentment and no happiness. We need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for happiness and contentment. So whenever you have an opportunity of knowledge, remember, go for it. You have every weekend, you have a seminar, you have a conference, go for it. Take your time, carry on. Take a look at, and I've got to say this because I see it in front of my eyes in my suburb every week. Take a look at those who follow other faiths. For example, do you know how serious they are? They pick their books and they walk every weekend. And not only in the weekends, whenever there is an opportunity, they're gone. And they're learning. What about us? We have the deen. How many of us have even read the Quran cover to cover? Let's be honest. 
What opportunities we have? We are not going to get them tomorrow. There are so many ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he says, seize your opportunities. One hadith says, Ightanim khamsan qabla khams. Seize five opportunities before they are overtaken by five situations. And then the opportunities are lost. So we need to seize the fact that we have time. You have free time. Learn something. Do something. Your life, your youth, your health, and, and amazingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us health and He's given us the age. He's given us opportunities. Today we have technology. How can we be from those who have not made use of it? And don't let shaitan come up to you and say, you know what? You can't. If you're with this qualification, you're going to go no way. You're going to go no way. For your information, I, and I'm talking of my personal experience, I was about to go and study medicine. Some of you might know this. And an opportunity arose. And in my heart, I still felt I want to go and study medicine. And mashallah, I had a very intelligent father. I still have him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a long and healthy life and use him inshallah to motivate us all. <clears throat> he tells me, he says, you know what? This opportunity has come up. Why don't you just go to Medina Munawar and see how uh, it goes inshallah. And then when you're finished from there, you can still go and pursue your degree. I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but I'm saying when the opportunity comes, seize it. It might not come again. That's the point. Please, it might not come again. Your life can change just by one word if Allah wants. And that word might be within a specific environment of learning that you might have thought, I'm not going to attend. Allahu Akbar. It might change your whole life. So don't lose the opportunities. And don't allow shaitan to overtake you. Like sometimes you have the issue of family members where as you're studying and you hear that, you know, my mother is ill. So you go and say, look, I need to give up because I need to go. My mother is ill. Your mother is ill. You make dua for her. There are others who are looking after her. Subhanallah. I know of a brother who studied with me in Medina Munawwara. His father passed away. When his father passed away, he had already gone to get his exit visa and he got it and he was about to leave and I met him and we were students and I pleaded with him I said no don't go you're going to go and do what you've already got family members there who are looking taking care of the situation your father is no longer the best thing you could do is make dua for him the biggest gift I can really give my own father when I've passed when he's passed away is to make dua for him I just raise my hands and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah, grant him Jannah. Ya Allah, forgive him. But by you going, what will happen? You're going to be distracted from your knowledge. And Alhamdulillah, the brother did not go. He graduated thereafter. And today, no regrets. And I know had he left, perhaps he wouldn't have come back. And if he didn't come back, that was shaitan doing what? One condition negative that happened within your family that did not warrant your return. And you returned. The same applies with us sometimes and now on the, for those who are not full-time students, you have family commitments that distract you. Oh, you know what? I have a little child. I can't go. Take your child along with or make a plan B and go or learn online or do something. Get some audio material and listen to it. It doesn't mean you have a little child. So now you are off learning Islamic knowledge. You might be living your last month or two of your life and you've lost the opportunity. The little child will have to be looked after someone after you're gone. Anyway, if death is written in your path earlier. Similar, similarly, when it comes to the brothers, sometimes a small matter within the family. And we happen to say, no, you know what? These are my children. And yes, you have family time. We're not saying no. But you need to draw your schedule and you need to know how much time have you set aside to learn 